Hey, I promised I'd answer some of your questions, so here we go. Teo asks, did you have any favorite toys or stuffed animals growing up? Yes, and I'll probably do a whole other video about my stuffed animals once I'm at home and can show them to you, because I had a lot of them and a whole elaborate family tree I cooked up. But the most important thing to know is that since I was really little, I've had a rabbit named Snowball. Snowball married a koala named Ben, and they adopted a husky dog named Husky. And they also had two other kids, a koala named Koa, and a little bunny named Lindel Bundy. No relation to Ted Bundy, I don't think. Mark noticed that my Am I a Man video had the exact same title as a video by Chris Fleming and wanted me to watch the video and react to it. I haven't seen much of Chris Fleming's work, but I watched his video and I thought it was really funny, really weird. And Chris Fleming really cuts deep when he says that to him being a man means feeling free to get angry in public, and willfully mispronouncing words you know. In other words, not feeling bad about physically and emotionally taking up space. I definitely do feel bad about physically or emotionally taking up space. Like, I do get angry at things people do in public, like listening to their music without headphones. But when something like that happens, I try my hardest not to show any outward sides of anger towards that person. Like, maybe they're not listening to their music without headphones just to be annoying. Maybe they don't have enough privacy to do that in their own home. Maybe things aren't just about me and my annoyance. This ability I have to kind of think through my anger when I'm in public is something I'm really proud of. And if that's not aggressive and masculine enough, so be it. But this sort of second guessing of the space I take up can be negative too. If I'm the loudest or most talkative or most energetic in a group of friends, that worries me. And I honestly don't think it should. Sometimes I'm just the loudest or the most talkative or the most energetic of the people I'm with. For example, I like to know things and I like to share the things I know. When the situation is right and I have a piece of knowledge to share, I usually share it. That might be more masculine of me. And the part of me that's conscious about taking up too much space worries about me being a mansplainer or a know-it-all. So yeah, I thought Chris Fleming's video was good. It made me think about the ways that I present as masculine or not masculine in social situations. I Am asks, here's a silly question. When you look up into the sky at night and out into the universe, can you see yourself? Not a silly question at all. I thought about it and the answer is not really. To be fair, I've been a city kid all my life, so I can't see that many stars on most nights. I've always loved the moon though, and when I do get out into places without as much light pollution and see a big starry sky, I don't usually see myself there because it feels very different and far away. But when I'm out into the stars with someone I care about, it can be this wonderful backdrop for deep conversations about things that bother us and stress us out, and the stars seem to be pretty good listeners. Well, it is now July 1st. I said I would make 30 videos during the month of June. I'm gonna call this project over. I made 20, which is not perfect. Two-thirds, for those of you who are mathematically inclined. There were a lot of emotions this month, but I'm proud of the videos that I got done, and I hope you enjoyed watching them. See y'all again soon.